Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. In this episode, I'm going to talk about Fugitive by Tim Fowers. And this game is a two-player uh, deduction card game in which one player is a fugitive and the other player is a marshal trying to catch him. And it is kind of the spiritual successor to Burgle Brothers, which is also by Tim Fowers. And as you can see, the box is shaped like a small briefcase, supposedly the briefcase that the fugitive stole. So let's open up the box, see what's inside, I'll explain how to play the game and I'll tell you what I think about it. Okay, Fugitive by Tim Fowers, the spiritual successor to Burgle Brothers in this nice briefcase box. Let's see what is in it. Let's see how I am going to open this because, <laughs> oh well, I guess I'm going to have to just remove the shrink completely. Oh, there we go. Yep, well, that failed. But it does have nice, I think it has, yes, it has magnets. So that's nice. It opens the briefcase, it opens like a book. And inside, I will zoom in a bit. We see some illustrations here of what is in the box. We have a rule book with the overview and there's a, a small car followed by these please cars. So here is the, the Rook from Burger Brothers. He's running away and well, set up gameplay. Just a tiny booklet. So not a whole lot of rules. Here is the briefcase. So we have a small board here. Nice as well. I love the artwork. Then we have this uh, deck. No, this is a tile with a calendar on it with score points. So we have that. We have a dry erase marker that you can use, I assume, eh, on that board. So that has its own little spot. We have a deck of cards with a handy dandy little pulling uh, string there so I can open it easily. So it's nice, it looks like a regular playing cards with the two characters from the game on it. This is a two player game. So one is playing the investigator, the other is playing the criminal trying to escape. Look at that artwork. Love this. <laughs> Here's the, the hacker guy from Burgle Brothers as well. It's pretty cool. Maybe there's more characters from uh, Burgle Brothers making a cameo in this game. But in any case, we've got events here as well. And we've got, let's see, so event cards. And these are, I guess, I don't know, locations maybe? <laughs> so. And there is more of those here. So a second deck also has a little cord you can pull. So here is the marshal. And that's basically the player turn summary. It's the same on both sides. And the fugitive. So that's what you can do. And more of these cards. So more of these cool locations. Let's see if we can spot any. Hey, here's a person from Burgle Brothers as well. Uh, let's see what else we have. Loving that artwork. That's so cool. There's really a story going on here, you know, running up the bridge, jumping off the bridge into the water. <laughs> here's a person from Burgle Brothers as well. So apparently all the other uh, burglars are helping you escape. That's pretty cool. Here is <laughs> here's the guy with the uh, dynamite. Nice. And we've got some more event cards here, but these are just black. They just say event. All right. So that's everything that is in the box. Uh, let's explain the rules. 
the setup for a fugitive is as follows. From all these cards, you take apart the 0, 1, 2, 3, and 42 cards. These will go to the fugitive, and the 0 card is placed in the center of the table, along with this board, which has the numbers 4 to 14, 15 to 20, 28, and 29 to 41 on it. So place that somewhere in the middle of the table. Then take the corresponding card numbers, 4 through 14, which are in this deck, and you shuffle those, and you put them on the four, the first spot and the second spot is the same and you shuffle these as well and put them over here so you can place them like this so you can still see the numbers so you have an indication of which locations are in these decks then the fugitive takes his fugitive reference card with uh, indicating what he does on his first turn and on the subsequent turns and the marshal also takes one of these cards with first and subsequent turn uh, text on it and she also takes this dry erase card with all the location numbers on it and she can use that to cross out the numbers that she guesses that aren't correct all right that's how you set up the game let's go to the rules at the start of the game the fugitive takes these cards 1 2 3 and 42 onto his hand and he takes three cards from the first stack, draws those, takes them onto his hand, and two cards from the second stack, and takes those onto his hand as well. And you may want to sort these if you wish to check the numbers, but you might also want to you know, keep them mixed so your opponent doesn't know uh, approximately what cards you're drawing because if you keep them uh, sorted like this and you draw on one side then that person might think okay he's drawn from the lower numbers so that's all strategy a little bit of bluffing in there because what you're going to do as the fugitive is place these locations face down on the table and the marshal has to guess where you are now how that works is as follows <clears throat> first turn you can place two hideouts and on subsequent turns you draw a card and you place one hideout. Now all these hideouts have numbers and you can travel between hideouts by one, two or three spaces. So I start at zero so I could go to one, two or three which I already have on my hand but as you'll notice they also have these um, footprint marks on them either one or two footprints and I can sacrifice those location cards to sprint further uh, than the numbers I can normally reach. So, on my first turn, I can place two hideouts. I could sprint or just normally go from 0 to 3 by just simply taking this card, putting it face down next to the 0. So that could be the 1, the 2, or the 3. And the opponent does not know that. Then, I need to go further, so I could go to 5, uh, wait, this is um, 3, so I could go to 4, 5, or 6 normally, I only have the 6, or I could sacrifice a number of cards with these sprint marks on them to go further. Now, each footprint counts as an extra step that you can take, so I could sacrifice some to go to 7 or 8 or 9, but I don't have those cards yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bluff. I'm going to take the 6, which I would normally reach anyway, but I'm going to take this 1 because I'm not going to go to locations 1 and 2. I'm not going to go backwards. I could potentially, but, um, you know, you'd have to have plenty of cards, and it's risky. So I'm going to take this card and use that to sprint, but I'm not actually, I don't actually need it. I place that underneath the location. That's what you do with your sprint cards. You put them underneath. So right now the marshal knows that I went from the zero to a second location to a third location and I used a sprint card which gives me either one or two extra movement points. So that's my first turn. Then the turns alternate between the uh, fugitive and the marshal. The fugitive always starts so then the marshal can draw two cards and then she can draw cards from any stack and card that she has on her hand obviously um, 
are cards that I cannot go through as the fugitive. So you could draw cards from the first stack trying to make it harder for the fugitive to go to places between 4 and 14. And if you draw them here, then the middle region will be harder to reach. And this, of course, is for the final sprint, the final stretch. So try and, uh, you know, discern where you think the fugitive is and then draw the cards from the stacks that you think will, he will be going next. So the marshal draws two cards. Let's just say she draws a card here and she draws a card there. And the marshal looks at these and she knows that's okay, that's five and 21 are not spaces that the fugitive can go to. She's not going to mark that over here because that would give away the cards that she's holding on her hand. This is purely for the calling out of the cards. So right now she's thinking, okay, so he's not in five. He's played two cards. Maybe he played, I don't know, so one, two, or three. And then depending on how much that would say that was two, then it's three, four, five or five or six or seven but it's not five you know what I'm gonna guess uh, seven so I know that I played six and I the, the fugitive can always peek at these cards uh, so he doesn't forget the numbers and the marshal says okay seven guess to find one or more hideouts right so it's not seven so the marshal takes the dry erase marker and crosses off the seven. Okay, so then it's the fugitive's turn again, and now it's the second turn, so I can draw a card and then uh, place a hideout again. So I'm going to draw a card, and I'm at six, and I want to reach 12, so I'm going to need a spot somewhere between that number so drawing from that pile won't help me so I'm gonna draw another card here and I get four so four as a location is not gonna help me but fortunately it has two spots to go to so let's see I'm at six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen that is good I could reach twelve now so I'm at six plus three makes nine it's normal uh, amount of steps I can take and I'm adding four. I could also say, well, I don't need four spots. I only need one. And the two spots, the two sprinting, can help me later. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm 12 and I'm... Um, so do I go to 14? Do I keep one of these? Let's think. What, I, what did I do? <laughs> so I'm at 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, 11, yeah, I'm going to use this one. So I've got three sprints plus the three that I already had, make six, and I reach 12. So I take these cards and I put them face down in front of me. And that is my turn. So then next I could go to uh, 14, or if I draw a better card, then I could use both of these to sprint further away. Okay, so then it's the fugitive's turn again, so the, or the marshal's turn. So the marshal has, you know, 5 and 21, and she's pretty sure that he's beyond 5 already, and even beyond everything uh, before 7. Uh, so she's going to go ahead and guess something in this range, 8, 9, or 10, uh, but first I get to draw two cards, so I could draw from this deck to eliminate some of those numbers, but I could also draw from this deck to make it harder on next turn, so that I'm going to do that. I'm going to draw two of these cards, 18 and 19. All right, so the marshal knows it's not 18 and 19, it's probably a bit too far anyway, and he wasn't at 7, he placed two more sprint cards and another card, so one, two, three, and two sprints perhaps. So it could be somewhere here. And if she says, okay, I'm gonna guess 12, and it is 12, then she caught me. And then the marshal wins. If she doesn't guess correctly and guesses, you know, maybe 11, then I say, well, nope, it wasn't 11, and the marshal crosses that one off once more and then game continues 
and that's basically all there is to it. So that's how you play the game Fugitive. And if the, uh, the Fugitive reaches 42 without getting caught, then the Fugitive wins. And if the Marshal finds out where the Fugitive is during the game, then the Marshal wins. If at some point the Marshal guesses a number that is already uh, been passed by the Fugitive, so for example, the Marshal guesses the number 6, but he's not at 6 anymore, then the, uh, the Fugitive isn't caught, but he has to flip over these cards showing the numbers that has, have been used, so she can cross those off as well. So that makes it easier for the Marshal. And um, the Marshal doesn't have to select a specific phase-down card, she just guesses a number, and if any of those match, then the Fugitive has to show them. And as a last effort to catch the Fugitive, the Marshal can start a manhunt, which happens separately from the normal sequence of turns. So the Marshal can start a manhunt when the Fugitive plays the hideout card number 42. So when he's already almost there, then she can start the manhunt, uh, while the highest revealed hideout number is 29 or lower. Okay? So that's important. So then the Marshal guesses a single hideout, just like before, and if she guesses correctly, she continues to guess another single hideout. And if the Marshal guesses all the hideouts, then the manhunt was successful. It's basically a last-ditch effort to find him by guessing more and more hideouts. And, well, if she catches him at the last second, then she still wins. But if she guesses incorrectly at any point, the manhunt failed, and the fugitive escapes, and the Marshal loses. And the game also comes with a couple of variants. So we've got some random events. There is a couple of event cards here which either help the marshal or the fugitive or the person who draws them to, you know, make the game a bit more random. So we have a whole stack of event cards. There is a couple of event placeholder cards that get mixed in for certain variants of the game. They are all explained here in the booklet, which is basically for advanced players. And there's also some uh, tips in here, um, helpful events. Yeah, here is strategy and tips for the Fugitive and for the Marshal, which are handy to read through. So that's Fugitive. All right, so my final thoughts on Fugitive. Well, first of all, the presentation of this game is phenomenal. I love the fact that the game box is this little attaché briefcase that's really very uh, thematic and it has uh, these uh, magnets to open it. It basically has all the components listed here. So the presentation is very good, it's really neat. Uh, I love the whole um, comic book kind of style, you know, the stuff that happens here, they're in a, in a discotheque and they're or, you know, in a club and they're moving on and he's going to a diner and to a garage and he's going on the highway over a bridge you know jumping into the water and that's just so cool this is an entire story unfolding and he even meets some old friends from uh, from uh, Burgle Brothers if that will focus it's not focusing well, in any case, so, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. There's a train here and jumping over the roofs and getting into the plane. Here's the other guy from Burger Brothers. So that is just great, great fun. And I really like um, the artwork. And it's, uh, the gameplay is really, it's clever. It's, it's pretty simple. The, the rules are easy to learn. But the strategy is pretty clever. You really have to think about, okay, where I'm going to move next. Am I going to use sprint cards or not? Am I going to bluff? Am I going to take really small steps and make it look like I'm going far? Or do I try to get as far as possible and hope that the marshal thinks I'm still somewhere in the uh, 4 to 14 area while I'm already halfway there, you know? And uh, does the marshal, uh, am I going to draw more cards from the area where I think he is? and thus making it harder for him, or maybe easy, easier for me to guess where he is, or am I going to draw cards from uh, stacks that are further away along the path, making it harder for the fugitive to reach those spots? And I already know that those guards aren't going to be 
his next uh, location. So uh, those are off, and you know that's just very clever, and uh, it's it's a really really fun, quick little uh, two-player deduction game, and so yeah, I, I, I mean look at that, it's just so cool. All this this artwork, that's fantastic. The theme, this game's literally dripping with theme, and uh, well, I can only recommend it. It's very clever. It's it's quick. It's fun. It's a fun two-player game. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, two thumbs up for me for Fugitive. And so that was Fugitive by Flowers Games. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and see you next time on Board Game Heaven.